Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos uploaded in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others or on the internet. In the last episode of Know Your Personality segment, we focused our attention on the type 3 personality of Enneagramic Jesus, namely as an achiever and performer. Though Jesus made his work his life, even sacrificed his home, family and everything in himself for it, and wanted the success of the movement he set in motion, he never allowed himself to fall into the trap of living for success, nor was he obsessive about avoiding situations of failure if and when he encountered them in his mission. In this episode, we will talk about what helped Jesus not to get caught up with the compulsion of success and obsessive avoidance of failure, even though he wanted to succeed in the mission his father gave him to accomplish. Firstly, like an Enneagram type 3 person, Jesus was a highly motivated person oriented towards success. He sacrificed everything for his mission and expected his disciples to do the same. Thus, achieving success in accomplishing the Father's plan of salvation of the humans through his preaching and healing ministry was Jesus' first priority in life. However, Jesus did not fall into the compulsive trap of living only for success. He was never caught up with success so much so that he avoided failures. Instead, he accepted situations of failure and learned to cope with them if and when they occurred in his life or mission. In Luke 4, 14-30, we have a beautiful example of Jesus accepting failure of his mission in Nazareth, his hometown. After his townspeople, despite the fact that that they were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They did not accept him and those gracious words just because Jesus was the son of Joseph the carpenter. He accepts the failure of his mission by saying, No prophet is accepted in his hometown. Secondly, since Jesus' passion, suffering and death were part of the salvific mission, God the Father had entrusted Jesus to accomplish. He knew well that God called him not only for a great achievement, but also to suffer a great failure. John 6, 1-70 tells that the failure of Jesus' mission in Galilee began to be apparent to him after he fed the 5,000 people in the desert. After the miracle of the multiplication of loaves, people who were fed by Jesus misunderstood the mission of Jesus. They plot to make him the political king who can continue to feed them and liberate them from the Roman rule because they did not understand Jesus' real values and what was implied in his mission. When Jesus explained about his true mission of being the bread of life, many of the people who were fed by Jesus through the miracle of the multiplication of loaves left him. Jesus had simply failed to become their leader as they expected Jesus to be a political leader and Jesus presented himself as a spiritual leader. Thus, his mission in Galilee completely failed after the miracle of the multiplication of loaves, and most of his followers in Galilee left him. Failure of Jesus' mission in Galilee did not tear him apart. Instead, it made him more assertive publicly about his mission. He was ready to confront those who were opposed to him and finding ways to attract people to his values. He accepted the challenge 
faced it outright, did what could be done to communicate with those who challenged him, and moved on. He left Galilee and spent rest of his life in Judea, especially in Jerusalem, so as to carry on his mission there. Thirdly, despite the failure of his missions in Nazareth and Galilee, Jesus did not give up, but journeyed towards Judea to begin his Judean mission. As Jesus was heading for Jerusalem, he realized that his mission in Judea would also encounter roadblocks because of the kind of opposition he was experiencing from the Jewish leadership. This realization made Jesus to take aside his twelve apostles and alert them about what was in store for him in Jerusalem by saying, We are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day he will rise again. Luke 18, 31 to 33. During his ministry in Jerusalem, Jesus challenged the hypocrisy of the Pharisees in his parable of the Pharisee and the publican. Luke 19, 8 to 14. Came to Jerusalem as the king of the Jews. Luke 19, 28 to 44. Cleansed the temple and challenged the Jewish ritual practices, Luke 19, 45-47. Warned the people against the teachers of the law, Luke 20, 45-47. And pointed out the evil intent of the Jewish leaders towards him in the parable of the tenants, Luke 20, 9-18 thereby defied and questioned many aspects of the Jewish life and religious practices. On the other hand, Jewish leaders challenged Jesus' authority, Luke 21-8, sent spies to him who pretended to be sincere and asked him questions about paying taxes to Caesar so that he could be trapped and handed over to the power and authority of the governor, Luke 20, 20 to 26. Since Sadducees to question about marriage and resurrection, Luke 20, 27 to 39, plotted against Jesus and planned to get rid of him, Luke 20, 19, and roped in Judas Iscariot in the plot for money so that he could betray and hand over Jesus to the Jewish leaders, Luke 22, 1-6, thereby get Jesus arrested and put him on trial. These back-and-forth interactions between Jesus and the Jewish leadership ultimately led to Jesus' arrest, trial, and crucifixion, thereby ending his Judean mission in complete failure. The above described instances clearly show that while Jesus lived and worked for success of his mission entrusted to him by the Father, he always accepted failures as part of God's plan for him. Thus Jesus found in failures the opportunity of serving others, a new purpose to begin his mission again, and a new motivation for living and working. This made Jesus never to give up, but always to struggle and continue the mission until it is accomplished. By living out this attitude, Jesus' life was more balanced, and he worked for the success of his mission without the compulsion to succeed and without obsessive avoidance of failure, thereby offer his total being for the building up of the new world of God's kingdom. This was clear from the last three of the seven words Jesus spoke from the cross. For a moment, realizing that his whole life's task has failed with his crucifixion, Jesus cries out in disappointment, Father, why have you abandoned me? Mark 15, 34. However, immediately he says again the last two words, Father, it is accomplished. John 19, 30. And Father, in your hands I come in my spirit. Luke 23, 46. Thus Jesus did not die with a disappointed heart, 
but with a heart that was filled with the joy of accomplishing God's plan of salvation and with a heart filled with the peace of surrendering his life in God's hands. In the next episode, we will talk about how Enneagram type 3 persons can learn to deal with their compulsion and avoidance from the Enneagramic Jesus type 3 personality, thereby live a compulsion-free and avoidance-free life with themselves, others, and God. Thank you for watching this video. Stay blessed until we see you again with another video.